Hello, Whovians, and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The Ark, starring William Hartnell as the first Doctor. So, progressing on through the third season of Doctor Who, we come to The Ark, which is the sixth story um, in the series, uh, but it is the 23rd story of the show entirely. So, The Ark. Basic, the basic synopsis of the arc is the Doctor and his companions Stephen Taylor and Dodo Chaplet arrive some 10 million years into the future on board a Generation Starship which is carrying the last of humanity away from an Earth that is about to fall into the sun. However, the cold that Dodo has could prove devastating to these future humans and their servants, the Monoids. So, that's pretty much the basic setup slash premise for the arc. Um the arc. Well I understand this story uh isn't particularly popular among the fandom and it does have its uh share of uh problems for sure uh and a lot of detractors but I don't think the story is terrible. I I certainly admire it. I mean there is a lot of ambition that's that's gone into it it's a very ambitious story um i mean there are some great ideas there the idea of the the whole the whole place being a huge ship uh the whole arc being this massive ship which is which is great and the fact that it's like set during the end of humanity where the humans are trying to you know go to a planet um that is more sustainable for them <clears throat> And uh, when um, Dodo obviously passes on her cold, it's the big thing for them because obviously in the story they've already found a, a cure for the common cold. As I said, it's a very big thing for um, the people in the story, the humans, because uh, this is set in the future and they've already actually found a, um, a common cold <laughs> cure, I should say. They found a cure for the common cold. Um, so this is a big thing, they're kind of not sure what the hell's going on, and then obviously, as you can imagine, the Doctor manages to help them cure the cold. And then they return 700 years later to find that the Monoids have taken over, um, who were once their slaves. So it's like the tables have now turned, the, the, kind of the, the structure of how things have gone has flipped around. So it, this is kind of like two stories in one, really. Um, the monoids themselves, uh, <laughs> <coughs> I would have to agree with the majority of fans. Um, the, these uh, these villains are just really silly. I mean, they're not the worst thing ever, but they're just crap. I mean, <laughs> I mean they they've, they've they've got this weird design. They're like these black aliens with like an eye in where the mouth is supposed to be. Um, and they've got these weird beetles style haircuts. I mean, <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it's you kind of laugh at them. I mean, the voices aren't too bad, but you really just, you don't feel intimidated by them whatsoever. They're not scary, they're not menacing, they're just a bit silly, really. And you know what? I don't think they serve the story any justice. I mean, I, I have to agree with um, Alan Kahlo on this story. The script is not the best. It's not a bad script, don't get me wrong. I think it's it's got some great ideas and the, the whole premise and the concept is intriguing. But the execution of those ideas is not very good. Um, it's just a silly story. Um, as Alan Kaylor said in his review, that the humans are all wearing sandals and togues, you know. And then 700 years later, they're still wearing sandals and togues. It's like, what? It doesn't make sense. And the monoids just make the whole thing seem silly. And also then when they go to um, Retruvia, this is the new planet, and the, they see the Retruvians, we find out they're invisible because of some kind of solar flare. 
what? And then the Doctor's talking to thin air as we hear a voice. You know, I thought, okay, maybe we might hear, we might actually get a reveal of this character who's talking over this speaker with a voice, but no, it's just a voice. Um, so that was kind of unsatisfying, really. I didn't quite, I didn't quite like that. Um, <clears throat> the story certainly moves at a good pace. I will I'll say that the pacing is good, and um, I like at first how the story is kind of like a a pandemic case. It's like a, Stephen is put on trial. Um, for the cause of the common cold, and that because the Doctor, Stephen, and Dodo are blamed for the cause of the cold, and the Doctor outright says that uh, at the end of the first part. Um, I mean, it's an interesting story, and then obviously it wraps up, and I thought, oh, okay, that was a bit quick. I thought this was four parts. But then the last two parts are very different. It's very much a, a race to kind of stop the bomb from blowing up the Ark. So, the story kind of went from being something that was quite intriguing to something that was just, you know, par for the course. A bo trying to stop the bomb going off, you know. How many times have we seen that? Not necessarily in Doctor Who, but just generally. How many times have we seen that? It just, it's not compelling for me. I mean, none of the supporting casts stand out to me whatsoever. They're all bland. They're, they're just so bland. that none. They all wear the same clothes. They're not distinctive characters, they're all the same caricatures. And they all dress the same as well, so that doesn't help. Um, and the script didn't give them time to make them distinctive. The only characters I care about are the three main ones. Um, the Doctor, played by William Hartnell, he's he's good in this story. He definitely tries with what he's got. Um, it's not the best material he's had, but um, he's, he's still very charming for what he has. Um... And obviously, Peter Purvis as Stephen Taylor, he's, he's, he continues to be very good. Um, he's kind of the one that takes a lot of action and helps the, the prisoners, the human prisoners, um, escape. Um, obviously, they're trying to shrink themselves down to go inside the, the, the ship to take them away to um, Truvia. But um, it's, uh, <laughs> it all kind of backfires. Um, but no, Stephen's good in this story. And as for the new companion, Dodo... Uh, she's alright. I mean, I don't think... I mean, Jackie Lane's a good actress, but I don't think there's much of a character there. From what I've seen, I haven't seen her in her other stories yet, so I'm going to have to watch those. But, um, from what I can see, there's just not much of a character. She's not the sharpest tool in the shed. She's a bit ditzy. She's, uh, she's a bit of a... a uh, she's a bit dim, a bit ditzy. She doesn't quite know what she's doing. She doesn't really understand. She's a, She's just a young girl. I kind of see her as a as a Susan replacement. They're trying to make her like Susan, uh, especially the way she looks as well. Jackie Lane look, she looks quite well in this story. She looks a little bit, maybe a little bit similar to Caroline Ford. Um, yeah, because she just kind of strolled in the TARDIS at the end of the previous story, the massacre. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, but I don't know if there's much potential for her character. Um, sorry, it's my computer. Um, I think, I think, as I said, yeah, I just think the script is a bit, um, silly. I mean, the script could have been a little bit better, because I think the idea and the premise of this story is really good, and there is a lot of potential here for this story to be really good. But it's just completely bogged down by the script. The monoids themselves really drag the story down. I mean, they're not quite as bad as, um, the Sensorites uh, <laughs> from the first season. Um, they're just, um, they were just ridiculous. I mean, oh god. But, um, I mean, you know, it was it was perfectly fine. It was, it was a fine story. Um, I'm kind of torn with it in a way of what to rate the story. I don't really know. Because I do find some of the ideas intriguing. And I did enjoy, I think it has entertainment value. There's some enjoyable moments. And the ideas are good. Um, but there are a lot of things that kind of, it's a, it's a mixed bag, uh, to be honest, the arc. It is a very mixed bag. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm probably going to have to give this one a pass at six out of ten. Uh, 
uh, yeah, <laughs> it's great that all of the story survives at least, but um, yeah, it's 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 a passable adventure. I was very torn with it when I was watching it. Um, it just didn't didn't really impress me that much, but it's certainly not terrible. I mean, it's certainly not a, a bad episode. It's not an episode. Not a bad story. It's entertaining. It's entertaining enough for what it is, but it's just a bit silly, really. <laughs> So, that's pretty much it for the arc. So, we now move on to the Celestial Toymaker, which is the next story that I've got to review. We're drawing very close to the end of the William Hartnell era. So, stay tuned for my review of the Celestial Toymaker. Please put your comments down below. Let me know what you thought of the arc. And, um, yeah, until then, thank you all for watching. And as always, I'm Mr. Tarnas11. See ya.